Welcome back to the StarCraft II World Championships at I Am Katowice 2023. I give you possibly the most intimidating Zerg player in the red. It is the final boss. It's Dark. Up against the challenger Terran. Not a favorite in anyone's book, but looking to write his name in others. It is Olivera, the Chinese Terran formerly known as time we are in the group stages i have it on good authority this is not the quickest match as Gresvin has uh, given us some of our most drawn out dramatic games and it's already off to a dramatic start behind that first reaper olivera is opting for this is a three cz a three two one one a very beyond-esque build here Opting for the the heavy bio play behind an incredibly greedy start So overall, I think not intimidated by dark dark has a tendency to against players. He doesn't respect so Everyone uh, Just try to cheese them out. Just throw some roaches in a nidus not necessarily precluding that possibility But dark has a tendency to just try to slap you across the face so hard you never recover uh, just like you should slap that like button and subscribe. That way you never have to be without great games of StarCraft 2. Thank you for watching and tuning in. Let's see how it shapes up. Zergling speed about to complete. I'd love... Well, obviously we're not going to see it this game, but I've been loving the resurgence of Battle Mech in Terran vs. Zerg with the, the adjustments to the Cyclone to give it a little more utility. Slight discounts on the Liberator, the Raven, and the Banshee speed uh, have seen a, a a surge of players, especially Hero Marine, um, but occasionally Maru adding in that battle mech. But we are back to the classics. I gotta stop. You can't have mech every game. We gotta go back to the Marines, and well, in this case, just Marines, and then eventually Metavacs for Olivera. Dark, on the other hand, Drops. Queens. You probably could have expected that, but uh, my job is to, at this stage of the game, commentate the production tab as neither player willing to take a big risk on some sort of early all-in, but instead much more focused on building up to a mid-game timing. One Zergling comes in. The severe lack of Hellions and, uh, you know, well, a bunch of marines on the high ground should be enough of a giveaway to, get, uh, to tell Dark what direction this game is going already. He's got an evolution chamber on the way, adding a few more zerglings on. Gonna come in with the rest of his pack of earlylings and confirm what he suspected. Just a whole bunch of zerglings. Noticeably absent. A baneling nest. As without that bane nest it becomes significantly harder to deal with the early medevac pressure. You're reliant on just mass zergling in the queens behind, which can work, but is certainly not particularly larva efficient. And again, it's dark. Uh, mathematical efficiency pales in comparison to the mental damage you can do to your opponent by just defending things with, with mass zergling. So behind this, dark, mass zergling, macro hatch, Fourth hatchery, not particularly much creep spread, but it is focused towards the center where the marines are dropping out already. Olivera stimp. The zergling count is more than high enough to intimidate these marines, but he's sliding past off of creep high ground, and the, the zerglings just get gunned down. They trickle into the line of fire, unable to get the full surround. The queens are not able to gun down the medevacs, and so far, Olivera off to a great start. Seven. Marines in trade for 32 Zerglings. And I, I want to continue to point out, it's about the larva. It's not about the Zerglings or the mineral cost. It's about the larva that Dark could have used on drones to expand his economy. He's up against a 3cc Terran who's going double upgrades. So not having that drone count at, at 75 or 80 early on is going to make it harder and harder as time goes on to... Uh, as time goes on to to compete with the efficiency of the Terran units. Of course, Dark is... I feel like we're going in circles, as as we've already mentioned Dark and his 
lack of caring for efficiency. I've seen so many games where on paper Dark has, has lost the mathematical battle, but just manages to build the right army to win the game. That's his specialty. It's kind of rare in Zergs. Zergs are much more mechanical than they are kind of an emotional situation. Uh, players, I, I remind you of players like MC Parting. Uh, occasionally Maru is an example. Uh, Beyond is another one, but there aren't too many Zerg players who are just like, no, this is how I win. I'm going to do it. And uh, good luck trying to stop me. Oh, Oliveira. We'll see how much luck he has. And the first Widow Mine hit connects with a big chunk of Zerglings. Another Widow Mine recharging. Realizes another one. Some of the Marines get caught in the crossfires. The splash damage hits him directly. Oh, oh, oh from downtown. Oliveira. 22 kill widow mine and comes in the left flank as well with the medevac still oh, badly bruised goes down with eight and splashes into the water olivera stimmy into the fourth though dark struggling to keep up with the multitasking and the marines of olivera the queens are completely out of position more zerglings gunned down the creep is pushed back and our chinese terran is sitting the 10 supply lead plenty of drones and 68 SCVs, which is a near perfect number for this sort of aggression. More than enough to max out on these relatively low gas units while still maintaining maximum unit production. He's on five barracks. I wouldn't be surprised to see more soon. We don't mind dotting the field, making things difficult for the Zerglings and Banelings. Big chunks taken down. And none of the Banelings find the connections they're looking for as a few Hydras come out. Badly bruised marines without any energy on those medevacs. I don't think gonna find the traits they need, but Zerglings and Banelings are not able to connect. And Dark continues to scramble. Marines slicing through the fourth hatchery. There is no alternative fourth hatchery. Like we sometimes see with these Zerg players. Olivera has been able to keep the pressure on well enough and has 2-2 two -two on the way. And with those 2-2 two -two upgrades, as well as a maxed out Terran army, Dark no infestation pit no lurker den it is hydraling bang no tanks for olivera and as the hydra count grows what are we at 21 hydras already hydras can deal with the widow mines a lot more efficiently than the zerglings and banelings uh, but of course you need that buffer There's more widow mines dropping in only hitting overlords unfortunately marines coming the other side of the base here single banling not enough Things backing off for now, but Oliveira is keeping that the main point here is the creep. The creep is nearly all the way back. Yeah. <laughs> Medevac flew over the knitting crew there that happened to be in the top right. Kind of an awkward position. Uh, not surprised Oliveira got caught, because why are there a bunch of queens there? Well, that creep is gonna get shut down seconds later. Dark, still no alternative fourth. Well, this side's on one in the center. Proven me wrong. Never mind. I could have waited a few more seconds. Widow Mine connects, gets some of the Banelings. I believe he retargeted it, but it may have just been a bit of luck there. Infestation pit is on the way. Dark under heavy pressure right now. Liberators on in the production tab. 46 more Zerglings as Dark continues to try to expand. Olivera has been untouched. No SCVs lost. No bases. Essentially, no damage on his half the map as Dark continues to rebuild. Plus two, plus two is completed. Some tanks being added in that backstop to help deal with the Hydralisks. A very important part of things. Uh, oh, those are changelings. That's the, the most units that Dark has gotten across the map since the very beginning of the game. A changeling. That's the level of pressure Oliveira has put on. Widowmine drops scrambling in. Drilling Claws is done, so those drones do have to run. Queens will deal with it, but any amount of attention taken away from the front 
is an opportunity for the Marines, tanks, and mines to dart in. And Oliveira not going to miss that opportunity. We don't mind blocking another base. Incredibly annoying to deal with. Double Liberator as well. Throwing those kickers on. Just something to keep Dark busy as he tries to take a more cost-effective engagement in the center of the map and possibly find the critical mass to carry it through. Hive is finally finishing up, but here comes Dark, maxed out with nowhere to go. Straight through the center. Olivera holds the line. Little Mines connect, and the, and the Marines on the back. While the medevacs may be nearly out of energy, Dark certainly didn't clear the field. He's able to push back a few of the tanks, some of the factory units, but he gains no meaningful ground as Olivera continues to reinforce this center area as well as establishing, consolidating, and defending a fourth base. Fifth command center becoming a planetary as we speak. Four ghosts on the way as well. So preemptively dealing with the later game tech. Vipers in production for Dark as he scrambles for whatever he can get. Vipers probably the lowest hanging hive tech fruit. But ghosts are already in production as well as 3-3. Three, three. Dark isn't slouching on his upgrades. He gets plus three melee. Started plus three carapace. Has plus two missile attack as well as adrenal glands. For those Zerglings. Still Olivera, patient. Oh, Marines try to target down the base, a bit optimistic, but uh, and the Queens come down and expend some of their energy on transfuse. Widow Mines, cover the retreat. Picks up, what a save. What a save! Uh, another tank left behind so you can save that first one, but the sheer amount of command centers. Honestly, at this point, if you covered up the names, I would believe you if you told me this was beyond. Two more command centers on the way. Adding to the five, he are, wait, no, seven he already has. We're quickly going towards double digits here. The Widow Mine has delayed one of Dark's bases for so long to the south, though he's managed to expand a little more comfortably to the north. It has felt like Oliveira has kept the pressure on, and therefore he's in the lead, and I, I'd agree with that. But Dark is not by any means in a bad position. He's still sitting on four or five bases. He is perfectly comfortable waiting for his hive tech to kick in. The only thing we're really missing are those brood lords and infestors that he's so fond of as time goes on. And right now we got neural parasite on the way. Pathogen glands already done. Lurker den starts. He canceled the spire for a lurker den. I don't know if that was a misclick uh, or he just decided on something different. I'm going to go ahead and say it was intentional, though. It probably wasn't. I'm kind of surprised he didn't just start a lurker den somewhere else instead of canceling. It's not like he's low on money, but it's the principle of the thing. And Olivera is adding in the special sauce here. He's got the hell chads on the way. Kind of quietly throughout all this, he's managed to get plus two mech weapons and is getting plus three as well as blue flame. That allows hellbats to one-shot zerglings no matter what their upgrades are. They just immolate any Zergling, as well as providing plenty of damage for the tanks. That has become kind of the, the late game mech transition, uh, at least the more bio-curious comp as we get uh, a little further into the match, and just makes it nearly impossible to do those big Zergling counterattacks that many Zergs are so fond of. Just a couple Hellbats, which kind of a mediocre unit, except for some early timings, becomes one of the most efficient late game options, especially, because somewhat ironically, no friendly fire. Just unfriendly, as unlike Widow Mines, one, they don't have a cooldown, and two, they don't hit your own units. That's a lot of ghosts that have already been added in. Are there any Infestors for Dark? We saw he was getting the Neural Parasite. No infestors yet. I, I ask that because uh, neural parasite and ghosts and using EMP is usually one of your best options. Dark is opting for 13 lurkers as well as six dropper lords. So the poor man's uh, not even that poor, but an alternative night. Is he going to lurker drop? I we're not that far into the game. Oliveira's just lock down his half the map. I believe he's building another. He's going to have sensor towers pretty much covering everything, but 
potentially the most relevant part, which is that northern corner where the lurker drops are already headed. A nuclear missile is on the way, just to make things interesting. The Pisac auto tracking done. The turrets have the extra range here. Scans across the board. Six orbital commands for Olivero. The lurker drops could be devastating. I, I just wonder, is it even worth it at this point? When, when there's so much money is uh, camping the production, it's usually a good idea. But we've kind of skipped the mid game and sprinted to the late game with only a uh, a wink and a nudge towards those mid game exchanges. Olivera constantly scanning. Parasitic mom, but quarantine's the medevax. Nuclear missile is launched. Here comes dark. A dramatic escalation of things as the lurker drops are headed in. Trying to cover, looking for turrets. There isn't full turret coverage. The nuke was canceled at the end of the day. Blue flame held that. Well, the marauders are scrambling back. The lurkers will be able to burrow. They have both hive tech upgrades. Where are the ghosts? Full energy ghosts. Nidus worm detected. A very zerg situation here from dark. The ghosts. Well, there might have been a nerf to snipe, but those lurkers can't scamper away too far too fast. I think that was an escape, Nidus. Well, this certainly didn't go great. This is going to open up an opportunity to maybe attack this planetary, but we do have to ask ourselves the question, at what cost? As Oliveira at 55, kills 5,000 minerals, 2,200 gas and duck to 26,800. I'm not entirely sure what the best case scenario for those lurkers were, but like I mentioned, I, I just, I don't know if there was any, I don't know if killing the production is even worth the, the trouble at this stage. Then again, Dark may be at a bit of a loss for how to engage the army without at least drawing some of it away. The Vipers yanking in tanks, will be picked off by the Hydras over there dipping in supply during this as the Hydras are able to consolidate easier than the ghosts that were forced back home. So, better fight for Dark there. The Dropper Lords, 17 Lurkers and three Hydras being shamed for their inability to morph to Lurkers because Dark is actually maxed out right now. Oh, plus three Missile is finishing up. Olivera th throws a volley of scans across the edge of his sensor towers. He has coverage to see exactly where the Zerg are, are mustering with those sensors. Scans for uh, any lurker drops coming in. Actually, he spots the dropper lords, but he's added a bunt. Wow! Even added the uh, liberator there. I think that was on the Nidus that he dealt with, but here comes Dark. Looking up the center. Vipers with plenty of energy. The lurkers. Looking for an opportunity. Yanks the Liberators out of siege mode. More Liberators added on. Advanced Ballistics is completed for any that do survive to siege. The Lurkers try to come up, but not able to make any headway besides picking off the edges. Oliveira, with that Beyond Mass Command Center style, has locked down his half the map, but Dark still has plenty of money in the bank. 54 more Zerglings. He's lost 430. It's certainly not going to end there. <sighs> these these ZVTs lately, especially here on Gresvin, looking more and more like campaign missions than they are like uh, your typical multiplayer match. As just command centers and turrets. What is the TPM right now? Olivera's turrets per minute is approaching Bronze League Heroes level. He's lost five. He's over one TPM. As still looking to contest one of these bases out of dark. It's been a continual struggle for both sides here. Oh, the ghost, though. Able to get a volley of snipes off before the lurkers manage to burrow. Scans catch a few of the lurkers. EMP a bit late, but still most of the ghosts intact. Yanks the Liberator in. The Liberator forcing a, a lot of extra micro. Great splits on the ghosts to minimize any lurker hits, even if he's not able to land the snipes play. He's really doing a good job of, of managing the damage from the Lurkers and pushing forward with these multiple siege options. 
And Dark is kind of forced to give up the southern location. Though he is taking the northern base. Uh, as we slice the map in half in a few different versions. Consumes his own depleted extractor. Dark, I mean... Uh, there's no no use of them except if, if we're going towards a draw and you need buildings Forward is that a sensor tower? I love it. I love really embracing the bronze league heroes aspect I'm trying. Yeah, it is a sensor tower beautiful. So that way he knows where to scan with his nine orbitals Which is pretty much one or two scans at all times Dark uh, can, can kind of forget about worrying about can kind of forget about lurkers not being detected. He has to be a little more worried about the ghosts. The covering nuke will allow Oliveira to pretty comfortably take this base. Is he gonna let it land? No, he cancels it as it was closer to his own units. Those command centers forming a disgusting choke point here. Forced to lift as they're taking a whole bunch of damage, but that definitely slows down the attack. And Dark is not making any headway. He's able to nudge a command center or two out of the middle of the map. These are not at a base. These are sitting in the center of the map. Their explicit purpose is a speed bump. It's only 400 minerals for a command center. That sounds like a lot until you realize 400 minerals is uh, only 16 zerglings. Yeah, wait, am I doing that math right? Each minute, yeah, yeah, that's right. Wow, that does not sound like a lot, considering Dark has lost 557 Zerglings in this game. Well, his choke point is definitely adding up, especially as the siege tanks with plus three and plus two mech armor kick in. But Dark is not done yet. Dark actually has the larger bank. It just feels like he, he doesn't really know where to go with it. He's trying to find what fights he can. Whittlemine takes out the Lings, but the Liberators are yanked out by the Vipers. One, two, three, four Liberators, I believe, so far. Overall, Dark, able to pick around the edges. What I question now, the uh, main late game army of Dark. We've seen in many of these games. And Dark is the most serial offender when it comes to late game Zerg versus Terran. He is the most likely to be in this scenario. It's Broodlord. Broodlord. A tactical nuke? Just zoning nukes. Uh, may, may end up... He's gonna clear several. The most confusing oncology treatment as he clears, like, five tumors with a, a nuclear missile. Scans covering everything. Ship weapons added on. Dark has broke the game with 201 supply. Bit of a spore crawler trick, likely. Well, the ghost count. He's got 18 of them. Lines up the shots. Dark tries to go forward, but gets cut down in the process. Oliveira, more than ready. Prepared for that attack. He's doing a great job of, of not giving dark a target a lot of the time dark uh he he just finds the fight that wins him the game that just spirals things out of control but Oliveira is is being very careful with his ghost he is never committing a huge amount well as i say it that's most of his ghost there he's got to be very careful if dark is able to grab him with fungal or even neural yeah there's some fungals of course, the medevacs helping out. Parasitic bomb. Lurkers. SCVs repaired. He lost 22 SCVs, but honestly, at this point, that's probably helping. <laughs> you don't really need more than 50 or 60 in the late game, as between mules and the fact you just don't have that many bases to mine from. Uh, it ends up... The priority is army supply. You want things that shoot at your opponent, and SCVs have many strengths, but they don't have guns. And that um, is a tragedy. So, uh, not until unless you're playing Manx, but that's a little different. Not co-op. Despite the look of the mini-map and the general demeanor of the game, still not a co-op mission. Yes, rapid reignition thrusters! 
A bit of an afterthought, but he does remember it. Metamax speed and boost cooldown. It's only 100 100. It only takes like a minute. Buy rapid reignition thrusters today. There's almost no reason not to. Yeah, maybe not the full advanced ballistics, but come on. And it's, a, it's an extended warranty for your medevacs. It actually is incredibly helpful at healing during the fights because the medevacs are now significantly faster than many of your ground units and they can get a few seconds of healing in as you're moving because the medevacs are no longer trying to move into position when they can't heal. Venn diagram of freedom. The liberators are going to be pulled out though. Still a couple so far back. Even manages to get away with some of them. And all of them are right now. His flexible defense is multi-tiered defense in depth. Uh, dotted with tactical nukes, turrets, planetaries. It is... Dark for the first time is, is draining that gas bank. We gotta start counting bases and how many minerals are left. Dark is mined, 4,000 less gas, but 7,000 more minerals. The gas is lost. Gas lost is about the same so far, but dark is up to 10,000 more minerals lost, which is pretty typical for a game such as this. How many creep tumors? 167 creep tumors. He's literally trying to body block. He's just throwing them in there. Creep tumors take hits. Okay. Uh, not many. They have uh, 50 HP, but hey, it's more HP than is early. Might might distract. One ghost for one second, and that could make all the difference. Ooh. EMP land, but after the fungal's thrown out, medevacs heal up. Oliveira. <laughs> the, the overlapping scans. The Vendaya scans. He is just not giving up any key locations. I really love the flexibility of the defense. He's given up some bases, but then put together a retake very quickly, or traded a base. But overall, never committing. Yeah, look at where the ghosts are. We lose a couple liberators here, but here come the ghosts. Neural Parasite, he, Dark sieges up a liberator. Which is a, a fun thing to say. Still reliant on the lurkers. No brood lords. Not even a spire for Dark. By this stage, I think you just have to build it. Like, and he's, he's exhausting his Evo chambers, which also are useless at this stage, as uh, he has all of the upgrades. Adding more ghost academies. Oliveira looking towards additional nukes. The scans keeping tabs on the army. Some of the sensor towers are taken out. I wouldn't be surprised to see them rebuilt. But, I mean, if you have seven orbitals, you still have plenty of scans. Four liberators at a time. Nineteen ghosts. Fourteen liberators. Fifteen siege tanks. Uh, the, the marines and marauders are a, a relic of the past. One marauder. I don't have... Oh, the marauder somehow survived throughout all this. Has five kills. But we've upgraded. This Terran army. This is Terran Plus. As... He has the best of every flavor of unit here. He has nukes and ghosts. He's got those siege tanks to unleash splash damage on the ground. The liberators to dislodge entrenched positions. He's got the Thors for just built-in anti-air and tankiness. This is an insanely hard army for Zerg to deal with. I'm what? Where are the Broodlords, Doc? He is the lord of the brutes. He's the one who's shown us that 30 broodlords are still more than enough to deal with late game Terran. But Dark is, has put all his eggs in the lurker basket, which does seem like one that Olivera is happy enough to crack. Two nukes at a time. And I'm having a great time with time here. As, uh, I, what I love is he's clearly not intimidated by Dark. Dark thrives, like, uh, not to throw Cure under the bus, but that's a national pastime. Uh, international pastime. Cure, whenever he plays against Dark, really has a lot of trouble with with just confidently moving his army around. Olivera is the one dictating the pace of the game. He's throwing nukes out left, right, center. But here comes Dark, trying to strike back. The ghost heading down. 
some fungals a bit late. Gets the planetary. More snipes coming through, but the fungals are being chained, and some of the ghosts are going down. Dark does find a fight. He's able to take down a key planetary. Olivera running out of mining. So I've been hyping him up, but Dark strikes back. Not giving this up. He's not resigned himself to defeat. No, he was biding his time. Plotting. Conspiring. Colluding. And manages to kill a key base and take a relatively cost-effective fight. About even on Mosses. Which is as good as it's gonna get. Though... Oh, 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 great target fire with the lurkers. He actually microed those lurkers not to hit the Thors, but to aim for the ghost. Which does cost Oliveira even more of those precious resources he's now mining very few of. Neither player. Oliveira cannot rebuild his, his army if it, if it does get dismantled. He doesn't have the resources right now. Bits and pieces, yes. The full thing, no. Which means noobs are probably going to be uh, retired. As those are a rich man's unit. Well, ability. At 100, 100 apiece. The lurkers just slicing through this location. And Dark has doubled and tripled down on the lurkers so far. He's lost 760 zerglings. He's lost 40 lurkers. And currently he has 15 on the field. That viper infester lurker. He is just so good at managing these energy bars. He's got battery pack Evo chambers here for the Vipers to, to sip on. In between the fights, 12 more investors. Vipers looking to move up. Is there a nuke? No. Are there? Okay, four medivacs. Olivera, volley of scans. Across everything. Sees the makeup of the army. Looks to retake. Knows he needs the money. Has been able to deny Dark. He's only mined a couple hundred gas down here. But here comes Dark yet again. The Vipers leading the charge. Oliver did not scan. Parasitic bomb yanks a tank. The tanks actually get some shots off there, but forces the Liberators to unseat. EMP lands on the Vipers and the snipes follow up. Fungal not good enough. Dark remains on that high ground. What a game. Hmm. Oliver looking to move forward. If he can get both the north and the south base here, he can actually take these from Dark. Usually it's the Zerg who manages to get one more base, but that could make all the difference as the, the minerals have almost dried up. Both players under a thousand minerals a minute. For reference, that's less than one full mining base, which is around 1,500, give or take. Plus mules, but... <laughs> Struggling, you know, 34 to 38 workers as the armies are massive, unwieldy, dangerous. Both of them could easily lose their entire army in a single fight if they go up the wrong, go up or down the wrong ramp. And there's a wide array of them here. Spore Crawler's moving forward. Olivera is maxed out for the last time. Dark is maxed out without too much behind it. What are the armies? Three Thors, four Metavacs, eight Blue Flame Hellbats, eight Liberators, 16 Siege Tanks and Ghosts. Up against 10 Hydralisks, 13 Banelings, 15 Lurkers, 21 Infestors, and six Vipers. Adding some more Hydras, the Spore Count. He's got 20 sports. He's moving forward with them. The tanks zoning them out. It's coming down to it. There's so many infestors. It's going to take four or five EMPs just to knock them out, even if they were all stacked up. Yanks and a tank liberated. Strikes back with the snipes. But three siege units taken down. Dark continues working the angles. Two nukes on the way. Oliveira, with barely any money in the bank, chooses nuclear missiles as the option. EMP on the on the Viper, but it already got the tank. How many Vipers left? Oh my god, the battery packs. Probably the best use of minerals here. Gonna use the Spore Crawlers. He knows they're going to take damage. Counter nuke! Dark actually pulls back. Using the nuke as cover, Olivera cancels it at the last moment. Flies off into the sunset. Olivera 
has taken the six o'clock base as well, though yet to be mining from it. How many orbitals are left? Still eight of them. So plenty of scans and mules. Look, it's a fungal. That's a big one. Just chaining in. Metamax not really helping out the ghosts. Lurker slicing through a few of the units drawn into the fray. The ghosts are coming back in a very precarious position. He has to be insanely careful right now. Those ghosts are at half HP. The Metavax has so much going on. Cancels the nuke. The tank gets yanked in, which just helps it out. Here comes Dark, looking like he wants to bite off some more of this army. How much will he commit? Two more Thors down. The ghosts are on the wrong side of the fight right now. Liberators, though unloading on anything they can get a hold of. Blinding clap doesn't affect the Liberators, but Vipers certainly do. More snipes. Dark down to 133 supply. How? He's actually lost so much. I, I don't even think Dark realized how much he lost in that fight. Olivera managed uh, Wow. Well, he traded out some Thors, some Hellbats, even some Siege Tanks. But he actually took a very nice fight and has knocked Dark down to 150 supply. And Dark looks like he, he's kind of trying to figure out what to rebuild. Hydras and Lings are the order of the day. The ghost to the southern side. The Infestors have to wander around. The Spore Crawlers right next to the turrets fighting the Liberators. Static defense and completely non-static defense for both sides. Nukes are finishing. Nukes are the choice. The nuclear option for Olivera. I couldn't ask for anything more dramatic. We keep going back and forth. The tanks shelling the spores. The spores bringing down the liberators that the vipers drag into the fray. Oliver at 160 to 150 of Dark. Neither player. The banks are... And he just taps it out. Dark, how dare you? Oh, he knew where it was trending, but no climatic battle. There's just no money left. Dark, ground down by Oliveira's cost-efficient Terran. 10,000 less. Honestly, it was still pretty... In terms of games like this and resources lost, that's relatively close. But a confident multi-tiered defense from Oliveira secures him a victory against one of the most difficult Zerg opponents. And this was Dark's comfort zone. He can beat anyone at this stage of the game. And Olivera hung right with him. That multi-tiered defense. I love the nukes. I, I, honestly, I think that's the best usage of nukes, is the just clearing certain areas, giving you a little more space uh, to work with. Not necessarily for landing on the whole army solar, but instead for, for carving out a piece of the map and giving you those few seconds you need to set up the Liberators, the Siege Tanks, maybe even add on a few turrets or something. But a confident display from Olivera. And in this particular highlight match, Dark taps it out. Well, what do you think? I think this Olivera guy has, uh, has some potential. But thank you for watching. Make sure to check out this video. Jimmy put it up for you. What do you guys think of... Uh, we actually adjusted some video and audio settings, so hopefully... It's better. Even if you can't tell the difference, just say it's better. Okay. Um, and hopefully you look forward to more of I Am Katowice. I have a playlist of the games that uh, I'm, I've been commentating, and I hope you enjoyed. I hope I made your day a little bit better. Good luck. Have fun. I'll see you next time. Stay chill.